this this morning I uh I have a message. It's called Trees, and uh, it deals with Psalm one one through three. So if you want to get your Bible and get that ready, if not, then we'll have uh, the verses up here anyway. Um, as I was uh, thinking throughout the week, uh, different things that's going on. Uh, I have to. I kind of am a Facebook addict a little bit. I tend to go on, and I'm always looking at Facebook and stuff like that. And it, Facebook has really become. Uh, not just a, a social thing, but sometimes I think we even get our news and different things from there. I, I don't know if I'm the only one. I'm always looking up and getting weather apps and uh, looking at all the all the different uh, news, uh, media, and everything that's going on. And and uh, it's also good because you get to connect with people from from church or your friends and loved ones, and you you know it turns into prayer requests and different things that you see going on. Apart from all the funny stuff that that's entertaining as well. Um, and uh, yeah, just looking through Facebook lately and, and considering all the different, uh, different things that are going on, there's been a lot of news lately, uh, a lot of different things just uh, popping up. It, 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 you know, you have the, the Bruce uh, Jenner thing, you have the, 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 the mayor's elections going on, different posts about that, and uh, you have uh, stuff that happened in, in McKinney, Texas, and, and all these different, uh, different things that are just going on, right? And uh, you get to see the posts and different things of that sort, and um, sometimes we, you know, do a little posting ourselves. And sometimes it's uh, you you see people posting on there, and it it, it sometimes it's a little a little surprising uh, what what you see people post because um, there's people that you know that are Christians, you know. And and you'll you you know they go to church you, you know they they're proclaimers that that they believe in Jesus Christ and uh, some people um, and not necessarily saying people from this church but friends and uh, they'll they'll make posts and, and, and like again you, you know they go to church on Sunday you you know that that you know they love the Lord but you see these posts and and you you think well well how how can you you say that being a God-loving, Bible-believing Christian, uh, because it, I would think that their 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 filter or, or their their mind is, is 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 looking at things through a biblical perspective, right? That they would know that God's word says certain things, and you would take a certain perspective, and so. Today's sermon, again, is called Trees, and uh, subtitled is, Where Does Your Wisdom Come From? Um, with all the different things that are, that are going on and, and, and different positions that we, we should take or, or, or that, you know, that, that the Bible asks us to take or commands us even to take, um, I think this is a very important topic uh, to, to cover. And so, um, again, today is uh, Psalm 1, 1 through 3, and a slide 1 here. It says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Okay? Now, Psalm 1 is, is one of, I think, I think it's three, three psalms that are called Torah psalms. The reason they're called Torah Psalms is because they refer back at one point or another to the law, and they talk about the law. And this really is Old Testament stuff about the Jews and how they saw the Mosaic law in the past, right? And it's, it's really about Israel and the way that they reflected their lives with God. Now, even though this is Old Testament stuff and it's a Torah Psalm and it refers to to the old the, the the old mosaic law still as christians this is this this is very very good to apply for our lives very very good because it's it, it says how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked the, the first the first thing that i see there is the word blessed and we use this word all the time right this is a Christianese, right? Bless, bless this food, bless, 
you know, this meal. Bless. And so I'm always interested in, in looking at, at these words again, even though we use them all the time, and, and investigating and looking and, 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 and finding out exactly, well, let's, let's look that up. And as I looked up the word bless here, because that's the first thing that, that came to mind, um, a lot of times it bless, really what it means is happy. I don't know if you guys knew that. So the next time you're going to bless your meal, you're going to ask God to make your meal happy, I guess. Or maybe have a happy meal. No, no, not, not a happy <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, but um, bless usually for the most part a lot of times means, means happy. Uh, but in this, particular, in this particular Hebrew word here, um, the word is, is actually one that means joy because of you knowing that you have favor from God. A joyfulness that comes from having a good relationship with God. Knowing that you're favored from God. So, I think I can make a, an assumption here. When it says, how blessed is the man, is of course first that we're talking about believers, right? This is, this is a believer. Because can't be someone who doesn't have a relationship to be blessed to feel favor from God obviously right so this is perfect for the Christian right because we're believers in in God and so it says how blessed or how joyful for God's favor is the Christian in our case one of three things that he tells us not to do the first one, does not walk in the counsel of wicked, of the wicked. So that means that there is a possibility that Christians could maybe sometimes walk in the counsel of the wicked, perhaps. Yes? Yeah. Amen or ouch? Or both? Does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Now, walking means it's an action, right? It's something that we're doing. We're walking as I'm walking back and forth up here to keep myself from being nervous. And so walking is an action. It's blessed as a Christian who does not act out or live in a way that's receiving counsel or advice from the wicked. Does that mean that, again, that Christians could be doing this? Yes. It could be from our workplaces. It could be from school. It could be from family members. It could be from any place that's not giving you godly wisdom. Does that happen? Yes, it does. Is it that we only take advice sometimes from people? I think sometimes, just like the Facebook is a good thing sometimes, sometimes it's a bad thing also. We have media. We have different networks. We have movies. We have all types of influences that come. Even just driving down the church today, you see billboards, you see different things just shooting at you for your attention. And all these things influence. My wife was reminding me of a song this past week. Um, Be careful, little eyes, what you see. You guys heard that song? And I, I think that, that we need to be vigilant about what we're watching See, like I said, it, it's not necessarily just people. It, it, it could be movies. It could be it, it, from any direction. And so joyful is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That your actions don't display those coming from the world or from the wicked 
Okay. And let's go to slide two. Here's two more things it says that the the blessed man or the joyful man does not do. It says, he does not stand in the path of sinners. Now here, when you're walking, you're moving from one place in action to another, right? But it says, nor stand. What happens when someone is standing? You're not just moving in a direction. You're now standing and staying in a direction, in a place, a little bit more. So to me, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this is not only just walking and getting ideas and living and doing this. This is now staying put a little bit more around sinners, around movies, around... I mean, this is just not like just passing by it and getting and living this... This is staying put. And so I, I, I ask myself, well, do, do I find myself a little bit fellowshipping a little bit more with people that maybe I should be not having as much time with? Am I spending a little bit too much time on TV or Facebook or different medias or different places that are not quite healthy for me? Because this isn't just walking and taking the advice and, and acting on it. This is staying put, okay, in the path of sinners. I look at number three. Okay, this is, again, the, bla- the blessed man does not do this nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And the, the first thing there that, that I look at is sit in the seat. And so I, I started looking that up, right? And um, I, I like the NASB. I usually use it most of the time, sometimes New King James, different, different interpretations. Here, I, I had originally put the, uh, the NASB. It says, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But I just did a little bit more, more of that word studies. And the, the Hebrew word here, yeshap, for see, actually translates a, li- a little better in the net Bible. It's actually assembly. So when you read it, you can read, nor sit in the assembly of scoffers. And the Hebrew word here, yeshap, this word is a- actually, it, it, it comes to ring more of a dwell. So it's, and nor, nor dwell or assemble with scoffers. Okay, scoffers are people who are mockers, who are people who pretty, you can pretty much today call maybe even atheists. They're people who are non-believers and, and they just pretty much mock God. They really don't care about anything of, from God. So this is again, blessed. Remember, we're talking about, about believers, so this is saying that there are believers that could possibly be assembling or dwelling with non-believers. Okay, now I'm not telling you to go and, you know, run off on your family and take off. And, but what I'm saying is to really closely associate yourself so much with people who do not have that love for God that you would get bad advice from them. Now, could this be happening to Christians? Absolutely. You know, I just, uh, when I'm not doing this and I'm finishing my school, um, I play mariachi music for a living. That's what I do. And uh, sometimes it's, it, it's really fun. It's, it's, it's a fun job and it's tiring like all jobs. But sometimes I find myself Sometimes in situations like this, I was working with a group for uh, about eight or nine months, and uh, I just ha- I had to leave my my job, no matter how good the money was or, or or anything, because I felt at different points that I was maybe getting in danger of this, because so much time spent in in my particular job that I just I had to drop that 
and, 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 and seek something else. And, and so I, I just felt that, that influence. And so, again, first we saw walking, then standing. But now this is what? Sitting. You see the progression? Walking. Standing. Now what's the difference between standing and sitting? Now you're just not looking and still have the possibility of moving around. Now you're just... You're pretty comfortable. And with the word as- assembly here, hey, this is an assembly. It's almost like you're churching with non-believers. We're supposed to be all of the same thought here, the same, of the same mindset. We're actually here. This person here is sitting down in the assembly of non-believers. So there's a progression. Not only is there a progression here, but let me tell you, if you start out by doing number one, you will eventually get to two and then eventually three. Amen or ouch? Because the enemy is not going to to feed you this big, giant, full-course meal and going to eat it up. I've heard it said before that you will get spoon-fed. The enemy is not going to come and say, hey, here's a gun. Go take that person out. It's not going to happen like that probably, especially if you're a Christian. But what can happen is, hey, uh, well, you know, just one little lie. You know, a little advice. And, well, I'll just, you know, don't say anything. And then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And if we don't watch ourselves, what starts out like number one will progress. And your fellowship from God as a believer, if you do not put some sort of stop to it, will progress to get worse. Let's go to the next slide. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So instead of sitting standing or walking in that non-believers or that advice from the wicked. It says, but the Christian should, his delight should be in the law of the Lord. And so the first thing again, I'm always looking at words and then and, and they, they, they mean a lot to me. I, 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 this is God's word. Every word in there is for a purpose. God has meant to every single word inspired in there for a purpose. So everything should, should mean something but. Okay, that's the transition. Second word I see is delight. So what's the first thing as I start praying and I'm thinking, delight, 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 delight. What is delight for man? And this is the first thing that comes to my mind. So you want to go a second? Next slide. Brownie, delight, ch- cheesecake. Okay, as, as I'm thinking... Huh? I find that <laughs> Amen. And ouch. And so, you, you know, that's the first thing I'm thinking, you know, brownie bottom pie. And the, that, the, I think they have that at Freddy's Custard or something, not an advertising. Just, but, you know, and, and so let me ask you guys, what, what do you delight in? Uh, again, I'm, I love food. Sorry. I delight in food, especially sweets. I have a sweet tooth. What do you guys delight in? Food, sports, I don't know. Oh, what was it? Family. Family time. Good deal. What else? Tortillas or what? What'd you say? Uh, flower ones. All right. I have a question. Me, me, and my, me and my wife and my kids always play these, these silly games. We always ask each other these silly questions, and that's just our way of having conversation. And I, I don't know if I made it up or my wife or my daughter maybe made it up. I don't know. But we, we, we ask ourselves sometimes, all right, if you couldn't eat anything else for the rest of your life, Marty, 
nothing else, just one food. Could not. You think could not? Could, just one food. Just that's it. What would it be? Like that's it. You can't have anything else. It's like pepperoni pizza, and that's it. All day, every day for the rest of your life until the Lord comes and take me, please. Cholesterol doesn't count. No, cholesterol doesn't count. Lobster. Lobster. Every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of your life, man, Marty, eating lobster. You, you're sick, Marty. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anybody else? Foods. Give me answers. Or I'll call on you. You have name tag. <laughs> hamburgers. You can eat hamburgers. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. From where? Whataburger. Whataburger. That's my wife right there. Whataburger. You like in and out burgers? Mm. No. Mm. They're cheap, though. <laughs> Went last week, and we had after here, I think we spent like 23 bucks for the whole family and everything. It was great. I'm not advertising. <laughs> okay. how, about, how about you guys? What else? Food. What was that? Salad with ranch. How old is he? Uh, all right, guys. But seriously, could you eat that food every day, all day, honestly? They get tired. So really, it's not really a delight. But he's saying for us to delight in his word day and night. You want to go to the next slide? And in his law, he meditates day and night. See, it's not only telling us to delight, to delight in his word. Not only just saying delight, but it's saying, and in his word, he meditates day and night. So it's not like just eating the pizza all day. But I'll tell you what, I, I got some great news. I mean, I can't. I love tacos. My wife will tell you I'm too Mexican for my own good. I, I can have tacos, breakfast, lunch all the time, you know, but, but right? You know, I, but, but not all the time. I mean, casseroles, you know, are good, too, and pizza and get off of that. And so, but the good news is, is that, you know, you really can feed off of his word and meditate all day. And I promise you, if you do, you're not going to get tired of it like you would food. You really can delight. And if you haven't ever done that, let me challenge you and let me, let me, let me tell you. Just get, get a verse. Get a verse. Just get a small verse. If you haven't done this, and just start in the morning, wake up in the morning, get a, just get a verse. And spend, you know, Throughout the day, as you're going on your job or doing, just thinking about that one verse, just thinking about it over and over, and and see what the little boy is doing. He's he's investigating that, whatever he's little bug or whatever he's looking at. And, and see, this is what works for me and what I do. Is is I just I'll take a verse and, and in, in this in this case it was these verses here, which was real cool. I get to talk about meditating about what I was meditating about. And so, just take that verse and just, first you read it, and then you reread it again, and then you start memorizing it just throughout the day, and then you start badgering God with questions. Just bug him. He loves it. Lord, delight. What does delight mean? What do you mean by delight? <coughs> why delight? Who delight? What delight? But. What do you mean by but? Well, why is it saying but? Take every single word and just badger God with questions. Saying, Lord, well, that particular verse, just, Lord, well, why? What does this mean? What does this mean to me? God, help me understand this. And you just keep asking and asking and thinking and thinking about it. I promise you, Holy Spirit's awesome. You just start getting ideas in your mind. Now, God never contradicts himself. He's never changing, and his word is perfect and never changing. 
So all the time, of course, when you get those ideas in your mind, they always have to be parallel to his word. If you ever get a thought or an idea in your head that's not parallel to his word, just brush that off. Because you're getting influence or advice from somewhere else. Remember, blessed is the man who meditates and takes things from God's word. So you just keep, keep asking, keep meditating. And that's how you do it. And I, w- I would just challenge you guys this week to get a verse that you could do it with Psalm 1 through, through 3 here. You could take these verses if, if you wanted and, and just meditate on them. Just every day. Just think about them. I promise you, you will delight in it. You know, as I was, I was driving around and, 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 and thinking about this, and I, I actually got to a point where I was actually smiling and feeling pretty good about things. And I said, man, I, I do actually feel a joy about Spending time meditating on his word. You will feel joy. No matter what's going on in your surroundings and life is tough. I know it is. Sometimes things happen. But there will be an inner peace, an inner joy when you're spending time. You will be blessed in that sense. You will have that joy that, that's inside. So you guys, if, if, if you're having some tough days and stuff, this is perfect. Again, sometimes on the outside we can't control. But you give that to God. And, and you meditate on this word, and he'll give you an inner peace. He'll give you a joy because God doesn't lie to us. It says, blessed is the man who does not do these things, but yet blessed is the man who meditates on his, on his word day and night. You guys do this. You will find joy, joy from God. It's awesome. Let's go to the next one. Bye. And look what happens. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. If you are taking his word every day and putting it in, you will be planted firmly by streams of water. Does water give trees growth? Yes. How about grass? Does it give grass growth? Weeds, Weeds, everything. That's right. Absolutely. In fact, with all the rain that we're having, I'm constantly cutting my yard. I'm serious. I think the neighbor is sneaking in that night and putting some grow or something. I don't know. It's it's just constantly growing. And but you're you're right, like what Marty says, it even weeds though, right? Weeds grow too. And that's that's why we were talking about the progression earlier. Because it will grow. Weeds will grow, the bad will grow. But so will so will good. Just the way that grass grows, the way that the trees, you know, they, they get all beautiful with the greenery. Same way we will grow and we, if we are planted by streams of water. We will receive water from God's word if we are meditating on it day and night. Okay, let's go to the next one. And th- look at three things also here, which yields its fruit in its season. It, see, every, every tree... Every tree out there, there's a rain. Hey, God has great analogies, doesn't he? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And yields its fruit. Now, if someone comes in with fruit, man, I'm freaking out here. And yields its fruit in its season, right? Every, every tree has a different purpose, different fruits that it gives. Some apples, some oranges, d- different, different things. Some provide a lot of shade. Some provide a lot of oxygen, a lot of oxygen, right? They all provide oxygen. But every tree has a purpose. Well, every one of us here has a purpose. We're like a tree. And you, each one of you has a purpose. Some of you, it's teaching, some singing, some preaching, some children's ministry, some, some administration, all kinds of spiritual gifts, right? And so it will yield its fruit in its season. If you are meditating on God's word daily, when it's your time to give fruit, you will give fruit. But you have to keep being watered so you can grow and the fruit come, right? Right? It says, and its leaf will, does not wither. What does that mean? No matter what is happening, you will always be useful to God. You will always, always be useful. Your leaves will not wither. 
And you'll be a beautiful testimony in the light of Christ. And in whatever he does, he prospers. Now, in the Old Testament, God gave certain blessings to the, to, to the Jewish people. He prospered them as, as he wanted to. Now, I'm not saying that if you're reading the word of God, that all of a sudden you are going to become this wealthy person financially or any of those sorts, right? Just clarifying. And that's okay. But if you are in God's word and you are meditating on his word, you, your will will want to parallel God's will. You will want to do and say and act in accordance to God's way. And because your thoughts are running that way, he will prosper those things. Does that make sense? Let's go to the next one, guy. I found this. I think this is cool. Let's talk about knowledge and wisdom real quick. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in fruit salad. <laughs> right? See, now, now that, you, that you meditate on his word, now that you take those things in, well, you, you might have some knowledge. But it doesn't mean you have wisdom. Or at least that you have good wisdom. Because if you don't apply what you're meditating on, now you're putting tomatoes and fruit salads every day. Right? And so we can get good wisdom and bad wisdom. It might not be based on the truth, but we can act out in certain ways. And you just have to make sure that you're putting in and then you're applying. You're applying. That's what I'm saying. Like if you're, if you're looking on Facebook and, and seeing these comments and things like, well, oh, this is a Bible-believing Christian. How, how do you put that? How do you say those things? Somewhere it's not connecting from, from one to the other. Let's go to the next one. And so here you have a, an adult drinking bottle milk. And scriptures tell us that there's Christians that are milk drinkers and some that are meat eaters. Let's go to the next one. Look at 1 Corinthians. It says, I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now, you are not yet able. There are Christians. Some of you guys are adults and you're drinking bottled milk maybe what does that mean it means you you might have been sitting in the church for a long time and you might be taking all this the sermons and all this and the studies and everything but you're not applying it it comes in and it you know it's there but but you're not applying. You're not completely applying wisdom. It, it might be some knowledge, but it's, it's, not, it's not happening for whatever reason. I, you're not convinced or, or life in the world is too sweet looking for you. I'm not sure. I don't know. But for some reason, you, you, see, there's Christians out there. This, this has to do with Christianity. And when I get to this and I start thinking, you know what, there, there really is three kind of trees. And remember, we're talking about believers. There's withered, ugly Christian trees. There's some that are just barely standing there, have half of their leaves off. And then there's those that are producing a lot of fruit in their season. And so... Let me ask you real quick before we get into Philippians. What kind of Christian are you or what kind of tree are you? Are you an ugly, withered looking Christian tree? Just hanging around. <laughs> eating lobster all day. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah, I'm watching. 
I'm picking on you, buddy. <laughs> or, or, or are you, are you, uh, you know, kind of half there? Or are you a handsome, good-looking, Jimmy-type tree producing all kinds of fruit? <laughs> My wife's like, hmm. <laughs> but seriously, each, each one of us are like one of those kind of th- trees. And today I want to challenge you to think about what kind of tree you are. Not only am I going to challenge you, but we're going to do something. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to take a little while. And we're going to ask God (coughs) that if there's anything that dwells amongst you that's sinful or that's not right, we're going to ask him to bring those things to your mind. Amen or ouch? Both. And, and so you guys take some time, and just between the, the quietness between you and God, you, you see if those things come up. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer.